Hello and welcome to Garden Chatter, where we connect gardeners, bloggers, and experts so that we can all grow and learn together. I'm super excited to have a great guest on tonight, and this is our 20th um, show, our 20th episode of Garden Chatter. So I know on the first one, I was I remember thinking, I wish I had 20 of these under my belt because I was so nervous. So I still get a little nervous, but I'm doing better. So this is a great format because you can join the conversation live and leave questions or comments for us. So my co-host, Bren, is going to show you how you can join the conversation live and introduce our guest. So Bren, how are you? Very good, thank you. We got a little bit of a warming trend going on here in Ohio. So um, we're looking at above freezing, so that's always good in March. And um, so if you are joining us tonight on the Google Hangout, you're going to want to click right up in the right-hand corner there. You'll see a grid, and when you hit that, there's a Q&A that will show up. Click that again, and you'll get a nice little comment bar on the right-hand side. So be sure to say hey, and throughout the presentation in the night, be sure to ask us a question. And you can also connect with us using the hashtag Garden Chatter. And so tonight, I'm really excited. We have a fabulous Midwestern um, creative. He's just amazing. I just adore Tony. I'm going to slaughter your last name because I'm not Italian. <laughs> Abrascato. Did I do it? Oh, that was perfect. <laughs> that was perfect. You've got it down. Oh. You're honorary Italian. It must have been the it must have been the pasta and wine I had tonight. Hey, <laughs> oh, <there laughs> so, <you go. laughs> Adam. Well, why don't we get started uh, and just learn a little bit about what Tony's been up to. Um, it sounds like he is a gardener way back, and I heard a rumor that he had some, some stories to tell about uh, getting into gardening. So, Tony, you, you want to share, share some of that? Uh, you know, I would, and, it, you know, and it's, kind of a, it's, it's a fun little story for me, but I think it's very indicative of what people go through and what we're trying to teach at the Flower and Garden Show. So when I was a young kid, my dad was an arborist and, and always was involved. We were outside. We were working out that I wanted to have my own vegetable garden. And so I, I went out with a shovel and I dug up a big square in the back of our yard and I didn't know anything about soil amendments or remediation or, or doing anything, but I just I dug out this spot and I threw down some seeds and I started watering and caring for it. And, and lo and behold, things started to grow and I grew lettuce and I grew carrots and radishes. And so I, I always tell people I can remember back to the very first time that I made a salad with the lettuce that I grew in my garden and I like I can close my eyes and I can I can taste it it was so memorable for me and I remember my dad looking at me and saying now this is great all summer long we're gonna have fresh lettuce and I said to him well I I only grew you know two rows and he, and he said well you cut it right and I said well no I just pulled it out it was done and so I, you know I, I didn't know any better and so that's how I look at the flower and garden show teaching the basics, teaching people to do it, and, and letting them know how they can do things on their own. And so that's kind of my story about how I ended up getting involved in all this, but how I found it to be interesting as a kid, and it just kind of, you know, pardon the pun, grew from there. So how did you go from, there must have been, I mean, did you continue gardening and being involved in the industry as you went uh, through your teen years and into adulthood, or where did you? Well, you, you know what, I... You know, it's interesting. I, I, I continued gardening, and I had an interest in plants, um, but I ended up, um, and I was, I was president of the Wheeling Park District. I was the youngest elected official in the state of Illinois, and I got involved in, again, being outside and active and doing all of these things. But I really... And later in my life, I got involved. I left the finance business and marketing business, and I got involved in an event company. And that event company back in 06 got involved with the Chicago Flower and Garden Show. And I immediately took to it. And I, and I loved it. And I started working on it and helping produce it. And then in 2011, I decided to create Flower Show Productions and begin the production of the Chicago Flower and Garden Show. So I bought it and took it over. So 
always I always used to tease that I'm not necessarily a horticulturist and an industry person. I've had a love for gardening and a gov love for landscaping, and and it's actually really taken off since owning the Flower and Garden Show. And then I approach the Flower and Garden Show literally from my perspective, um, bringing in professionals obviously on the on the higher end, but bringing in my perspective of not being an industry person and knowing what a consumer would want to know at a show like ours. Well, I have to let you know that the Twitter stream's going a little crazy here. We got a lot of people that are tweeting out to let us know that they're watching. And here on uh, Google Hangout, Mike Now, he's he's a Chicagoan, you know Mike. He's just saying hey. <laughs> and we have, oh yeah, we love Mike Novak. He's great. And we have. Uh, I want to say hi to Lisa. Um, Lisa is the houseplant guru, and I know she's going to be at your show this year, Tony. So she'll have to reach out and say hi to you. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. You know, it, it's one of the nice things. I meet some of the best people through Flower and Garden Show, and and people that really, you know, have a have a passion for it, and we're able to share that together for these nine days in Chicago. It's, it's awesome. Well, it, I, I like how um, wh one of my favorite parts about your show is not only is it in the Midwest, so it's always nice to see everyone. We have, you know, we all have a lot in common, although you do have a lot of people from throughout the country. In fact, I think I met a couple of women last year who, who were visiting even from uh, France um, for your show. Um, they were part of the... Um, uh, your fiber arts area and um, it, it's just so Thanks. exciting to me how you pull the art industry in I mean you you know Chicago is known for the Chicago Institute of Art and the foodies the food is amazing um, I can tell you you must be passionate about your local food right <laughs> You know, we, we have some of the best restaurants, in the, you know, as, as you would say proudly of your own city, we have some of the best restaurants in the city of Chicago, and we have some of the best chefs in the city of Chicago, even to the point of they have moved the James Beard Awards from New York to Chicago this year, and it's indicative of the 27 chefs we have on our Garden Gourmet stage. So, yeah, we love it, and cooking is such an integral part of gardening as well, so we're, we're always happy to bring that on board. Okay, and I also, I keep seeing some information about an international cake decorating competition. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. It's actually the national cake decorating competition. Um, okay. It's it's presented, it's the 14th annual, uh, 14th annual Retail Bakers Association Pillsbury Cake Decorating Competition. And we have eight competitors that have qualified in regional qualification rounds throughout the country that will come to Chicago on our closing weekend, the 21st and 22nd of March, and they will compete to see who's crowned the national cake decorating champion. And this is, this is a, great, you know, a, a great part of what we do at the show. For several years, we actually hosted the regional cake decorating competition, and now the national board has come to us and said we'd like to host it It'll be the first time ever that it's been seen by the public. Normally it's held behind closed doors in their trade show, but we're actually going to host it in the public. So we're very excited about that. That's cool. And um, um, sorry, Adam, I'm like, we're talking about food here. Just give me a minute. <laughs> I'll let you take like over. <laughs> so I have to I have to let people know you may be thinking cake decorating seriously at a garden show. Oh, come on, we all love to eat. and I have to tell you the cakes that were on display last year were phenomenal and they all had the same. They had a garden theme. Um, this one was like a skyscraper with little rooftop gardens on it. it it's just pretty cool. Will we see that again this year, Tony? Oh, you know, absolutely. And what we saw were people in the region trying to qualify for the national. Now we have all of those champions coming to Chicago. So I think the level of what we're going to experience at the show will be even greater. Plus, instead of just one day now, we're two days. And so that you're right. They, ha they can do a free form, like mm -hmm. the skyscraper. They mm -hmm. have to do a wedding cake. And, um, and they have a, a couple of different categories, which we have out on our website. So you can read about all the categories. And what they do is they actually give them a storyline of a couple. And so you'll be able to read about the couple 
and then they design cakes for that couple at the show. It's, re it's really interesting. I've learned a lot from it, and just great, great, talented people. That sounds so fun. I, I'm wondering, what uh, since I'm not going to be able to get to the show, not right away, um, I'm wondering what else, uh, what, what else could we see there when, when visitors come this year? What's, what's going to be... What's going to be on? Well, you know what? We, we, we have a lot of different categories that relate to the show. So the, the, obviously one of the main parts is, and, and this is where we, we kind of lead the country in this. We have, we have 24 plus feature gardens that are backyards, balconies, uh, patios, and they're actually walk-through gardens where you can experience them firsthand. Most of the garden shows, and again, nothing, nothing wrong with it, where this is just our differentiation, that you can actually walk through our gardens and you can experience them firsthand. So when you walk in, you'll experience these 24 plus feature gardens. And then we have our seminar area, we have our, our cooking demonstration area, we have, we have an actual whole garden that's our how-to garden. And the gar how-to garden has a gardening live stage and so you'll be able to see demonstrations from experts from the Chicago Botanic Garden and the Morton Arboretum and a variety of different people from around the country that will be there. But we also have what we call our potting parties and these are container gardening classes and people will be able to come in and make their first container of the season. They'll be on with um, Two Bloom, who was our expert last year that did all these container gardening classes. And then we've added a cut floral design class this year with our sponsor Mariano's and so people will be able to do their own tulip design in a curly willow armature. So then we have that class. And then one of the things that I'm most proud about um, as an aspect of the show is our kids activity garden. We actually expanded our kids activity garden this year by another 2,500 square feet because we've had such a great response to it. And, and it's bringing kids and families into our show. The kids will actually have eight different activities that they'll be able to do throughout the day anything from experiencing a bug zoo from the Illinois Master Gardeners to working with the Cold Children's Museum to create their own bug habitat. They'll be able to plant seeds, they'll be able to plant a plant, a, a whole thing. And so our kids' activity garden is something that people are really going to be able to experience that they don't see anywhere else um, throughout the country. And so we're excited about that. And then I always talk about um, our marketplace area, which is kind of a well-rounded area where you can find some of the latest and greatest in greening and landscape. I always joke that I think it's my mom's favorite part of the show. She always comes down to support me, and, and my whole family does, quite honestly, and they support me, and my mom works that marketplace like nobody's business. She's in there buying things for the garden and seeds and bulbs, and so that's, you know, people will be able to experience that. We're talking about 170,000 square feet, it's a good way to spend the day anywhere from two to four hours um, or longer you can spend in it. Plus, the other nice thing is that, you know, Navy Pier is the number one tourist destination in the Midwest. They have nine million visitors a year that come into Navy Pier. And so, you know, I always tell people, you know, come for the show, stay for the pier, go shopping on Michigan Avenue, have an awesome lunch. Um, so people are going to experience a lot when they come to the show. Definitely, very uh, convenient parking too. It's super easy. You um, you don't even have to walk outside. You just come right in. But um, we've been pretty lucky lately with the weather during the show, um, minus the Green River <laughs> that's going on. Right. <laughs> Let's note it's St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so um. I have to, just because Adam hasn't been to the show before, um, I, I want to comment that, you know, last year I had such a great time uh, connecting with people at the show. And just to kind of step back and take pictures um, of the different gardens, um, it didn't matter if I was in the formal area or if I was over where there was some practical gardening with, um, there were raised beds and um, just different irrigation ideas from uh, some students. And they even, had, they even had a farm all right in the middle of the display. It didn't matter where I was standing in the show. I could overhear kids and parents and grandparents. Everybody was having just a good time. It was really exciting to to have that. Um, so, Tony, when you say okay, the formal gardens, 
tell us about I w if you could tell us about the um, you had like the file cabinet display and if, if people are following us on the hashtag garden chatter right now on Twitter uh, there's a tweet going out with an image of that it, it was pretty cool can you can you tell us a little bit about that that creation 